Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel Anaka Design. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. If you were sleepwalking and found your way here, well, I consider that a happy accident. And I hope that you find enough uh, value, novelty, humor, advice, difference in my approach that you feel compelled, nay, forced to, compelled, forced to, um, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we are at the 830 some um, number. And of course, the next big milestone is 1000. Uh, Kim Newberg, and if you don't know her, you definitely should. Uh, did a shout out recently because, of course, um, you know, getting to a thousand is kind of a big thing to celebrate. And I, of course, uh, have the intention of doing a giveaway at that point. So I am calling, I'm using the hashtag follow up Friday for this video simply because. Uh, and that also came from Kim. I don't know if she was the inventor or adopted it from somewhere, whatever. It just, it makes sense on so many levels. Quite often during videos, I am showing you things. I'm starting projects. Um, I either can't take them to completion because of time, or maybe I've done a prototype or two and then I've worked on a couple and... It just, um, you know, unless unless I'm taking photos, posting them to Instagram, and you're going to Instagram, and it just is another way for me to round up all these these orphan projects, bring them all together, and show you what has transpired. It um, it's also an incentive to me to get these things dealt with instead of just you know sort of filing them for at some for some point in the future that may or may not ever come. So without further ado, uh, in a recent video, I um, showed you this uh, journal cover, <coughs> excuse me, that was um, basically collaged just all, I mean, all these images came from one book, focal point, a lot of decorative borders. And I mean, you maybe can't tell, but these, this part here is all collage anyway. And it was done on a nine by 12 envelope. However, I didn't have the inside done. I mean, the inside cover done. So, um, you saw me perhaps struggle with this stretchy fabric. It used to be a top, and um, I got, you saw me glue it down, and what I've done since then is um, zigzag around it. <coughs> now, in order to see what I was doing and stretch it uh, where I needed to, I had to sew from this side, which was not exactly ideal. And maybe I should have changed the needle or whatever, but when you sew on paper, it does make sort of puncture marks. And I thought, ooh, that's not very good. So I then sewed a second time, this time from the front. And I tried not to sew into the same holes, but you know, it's all, it's all about spacing. I then um, inked it a bit with Night Sky which is an archival ink color in part to um, cover those little white puncture marks. I had flattened them down with a bone folder, but um, I think that that just helped. Anyway, okay, so now I can't remember what you have seen or not. Um, I doubt that you saw this. It's a page out of a, a bird book and of course it's got some blue going on and I used um, some of the shall we say discards potential waste product of taking apart a garment this is a seam allowance so I use that as a tag I'm just sticking it here for the time being so that these things stay together this was um 
part of, I had done, I hate to keep repeating myself, but if you didn't see that video, during the 100 day project, I had done some mosaic type master boards using images from art books. So I added this tie again, which matches that, um, these little labels and things. It's back with ledger. Now, I have quite a bit of piano roll paper. And actually, the best selling item in my Etsy store is my cabbage dyed um, piano roll paper. Now, I don't know whether I it's a mistake that I'm making or not, but I never uh, include the end of the roll which has this little tab and usually the label is not here but whatever from brand, brand to brand it differs anyway i never use i never include this in what i send to people and their bundle um because i'm thinking maybe they don't want it so i of course have a number of these piling up so you will see them recurring this one was in a little sad shape. I've repaired it here with a couple pieces of washi. I've just used papers that, I mean, this is just copy paper, copy paper, copy paper. This is like, you know, that's fun stationery you can buy in packages. This is some gift wrap. Looks as old as the hills. The roll was very ratty. I just thrifted this the other day. This is <laughs> this is how I straightened it out. Um, I haven't done a video on my thrifting. Uh, coffee paper. This is a more ledger. This, I believe, was from the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. And there's the guys adding machine tape and so on. So that is in there. Here, Okay, this is part of what I'm talking about. So this, too, was um, a damaged piece, but little by little, I am going to be using these things up in my project. Looks kind of nice against that lavender paper. Um, these two things were part of cutoffs of that master board. And I thought, oh, that looks really nice with the lavender. That looks okay with the uh, coffee dyed blue. So why not just have facing uh, belly bands? Now this, I cannot remember. I hope that I was talking to you or showed you these. Oops, we need a little dab of glue. Um, I'll get that later. I had a number of these paint chips and they are very unusual. Let me show you one. Oh, have I? Huh, I'm, I cleaned up. Go figure. Anyway, they were different in that they're they're tall, they're long. They also had they all had holes punched in them. Um, here are some of the things that that I cut off if I didn't want the whole top end. But the part that was unusual, and of course you can't see it because I backed this, is that it had sort of cutting lines where I guess you could cut off. Paint. maybe decorators use them like I do have a paint deck that you know a, a painter or a, an interior designer would use but I'm thinking maybe that uh, cut it off in sections was uh, maybe the idea there was to use it for vision boards or presentation boards to clients or something like that anyway I had thrifted some rub-ons and if you've watched me more than a few minutes, you know that I have had some issues with rub-ons. They're either really old and dried up or they've mis been mishandled along the way. And it's usually an, an exercise in frustration. These looked reasonably well intact. So I thought, okay, they're all white. They're going to look good against these solid colors. So you'll just see that recurring. I also have a lot of postage stamps. So I used postage stamps on many of them. And I also used stickers out of my, I well, sorry, botanist sticker anthology or the, what's the other one? 
Forest Fairies and Fungi sticker anthology. Uh, let's see if I can bump the camera again. Anyway, so that is that. Oh, and this really cool stuff that feels like chenille. So we got that happening there. Uh, this obviously can accommodate quite a bit more stuff. Um, more of the same. This is just a book, you know, the uh, fly leaf pages. Uh oh, what happened here? A little smidge of glue. The other piece, the other side of the uh, piano roll, I just glued. I mean, it's ragged, but I made a little pocket of that. I clipped this envelope in here thinking that, that would be, you know, just as a reminder to use it in the future. This is that um, wrapping paper uh, and another envelope. And that is all she wrote for this. Now, I haven't done anything to the cover and perhaps I wouldn't. Or I would be very deliberate about what I do because I think that is beautiful in itself. It looks like a piece of a work of art. And of course, you know, probably it's not gaping or anything. Well, maybe it is. It's a soft-sided one. Um, maybe it needs a closure at some point. But let's carry on. Another thing I showed you, and I just have an elastic around these guys helping them stay closed, were more of these little mosaic sheets. So I said, oh, they would make cute little journals. So I cover, because the paper cracked when I folded it, I used some um, bias tape that I had opened flat and ironed. And then this was just kind of half width because that does cover quite a bit. Anyway, uh, the inside was... Again, more of that ledger, coffee dyed paper, um, and paper. This is there's really really nothing much in here. It's just naked. A lot of writing space. Obviously, pages from a book called uh, Emergency Nurse, and that basically is that. I just put that little label on there, thinking that if you know if I sell this or give it to somebody or whatever. Um, that it would be sometimes maybe a person would like to put a name on a little book or um, a date or something. This, okay, this one had the quarter inch spine. If you saw that video, you'll remember that. This one was just folded over, uh, coffee dyed paper, same sort of scenario, basically naked. I just stapled this one. It has uh, fewer pages, again, because that sort of thing doesn't lend itself as readily to adding a whole bunch of pages. Um, okay. You will remember this. I said that this would be a uh, belly band or a side tuck in, in a... Um, Tall Skinny Journal, don't have one just yet to put it in, so that's that. So now the next several items are going to be, whoa, one bit the dust. Um, what, the rest of them are more of the paint chips with the rub-ons. Oh, let me show you this one first. I hope you can see those little dots, groups of three dots. And I have a lot of this ribbon, so I just uh, use this, and it could be a tuck spot. Okay, so then we have things like this that I intended to have over the page. So this one I matted. Now, again, maybe not my smartest decision ever, because that's pretty old, fragile paper. So, again, I don't know how well that will hold up over time. Book guts. Um, again, this cracked when I folded it, so I've had to kind of try to find a coordinating ink, or I can't, maybe I used a felt pen. I don't know. Um, this scrap has been there forever. A sticker out of the book, some book page. Um, same elements on the, on the other side. This was some sort of um, 
what would you call it? You know, sometimes when you have in books, when you have, uh, when they're trying to protect uh, illustration plates, they have that, it's not vellum, it's not, I don't know what it is, but you, you know what I mean. And then I had these little things left and I thought, well, you know, why not add a little tab to this? Oh, and since I have this um, journal, this demo journal here, why don't I just uh, show you what the intention would be? So that could be paper clipped on or perhaps it would stay in place just, you know, with the book being closed. So it's a nice addition. Now, what I could have done, but of course didn't think of it at the time, was made, um, you know, decorated in, in the way that it could work horizontally. But of course, I didn't do that. Now, this is going to look foolish against brown. Uh, well, maybe it's all right. So here I've used some tool, stamps, stickers, made the little tab. This time I've shown the number and the name of the uh, paint color. More of the same. So again, same scenario. Oh, I see that I didn't touch that up with glue, so I'll have to do that. See, I did this one. So here I've used a doily. I have to say, working with tool, I mean, it adds a nice additional element and a bit of texture and so on. But it is kind of a pain in the derriere. Um, so the only difference here is the paper doily. I love these flowers so much. And you can see that I had, uh, oh, I backed everything. And I had also put the little uh, rub-ons in different locations on these items. So then, uh, let's find a better page. This is, I mean, it could be clipped onto the side and be a tuck spot. It could be a bookmark. It could be whatever your little heart desires. So with this one, I've used uh, some cheesecloth type stuff, some more stamps, and book page, and you've seen it all. Now this one, I love that this that these paint chips. They basically, well, no, I guess it was a little longer. I I took off the part that had the the little bear symbol and the paint number perhaps anyway i like it because it is um curved at the top so again tool some stamps a bee and this beautiful flower out of the sticker book and look at this a canadian stamp beautiful color four cents in case you're wondering who that dapper man is that's Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, date of birth, 1840. Holy cow, he lived to be 100 years old, to 1947. He's the father of the telephone. So when you are grateful for your telephone, thank Bell. And when you are fed up with your telephone, um, I don't know who you should blame about that because it's probably your cell phone that you're fed up with. And, oh, I have two more things to show you. Then this was another one of those. Okay, so this is the full size of the paint chip, so you can see I cut quite a bit off that one. Um, I This I had done kind of a whole sheet of the, um, um, what do you call it, rub-ons. This is also out of the sticker book, and this was... A strip, well, several strips of fabric off a, okay, what was it? Bed skirt, duvet cover, some kind of linen that I recently thrifted. And it's got so many shades of blue and so on in it. And I just thought it worked perfectly with these colors in the rocks, her skin tone, the book, color, the book page, 
all of those tones are there, including the black. And of course, oh, in this case, I covered the entire thing with tulle, taped it down on the back side with scotch tape, and then, uh, you know, held it all together with this backing. So I really like this. Now, I would, and I did three tiers of ruffles here. I would argue that it is complete as it is. I'm thinking that she's looking up at that beautiful bow. Not sure if I'm right or not. And this is just some girl green ribbon that was in shades of blue and black, and it seemed to all work together. So that is that. Uh, I can get rid of this now, and I will show you one last thing. You may remember the other day I showed you this piece of uh, paper that was made off a Graphics Fairy uh, washi tape digital. Uh, I used navy seam binding to hold it closed. I backed it uh, with this, I don't know what that is. I think it came out of a book. It was just, you know, a kind of a really neutral gray um, end paper. And um, zigzagged around it after the glue dried. And then, again, I was using scrap pieces of... Um, well, this is the wrong size, of course, but anyway... Um, uh, scrap pieces off the dyed piano paper. You know, it's pretty fragile. Even, even the pieces that don't have all the holes in them are fairly fragile. So, reinforced it with, um, I think a book out of, or not a book, a paper out of an old scrapbook. And, of course, so there's this interesting pocket here. This is more of the paper, again, an irregular shape. It's got a little hole in it. I didn't, oh, I put my washi tape away. I didn't bother um, repairing that, but it could be. Upper tuck, lower tuck. This is something that's been kicking around a long time, and I liked it because it was so gross, but it also is pretty fragile, and some pieces have broken off. But I uh, I left the crease where it was. I, I reinforced the folds with some washi tape, reinforced a tear there. Uh, it's from an old Daphne du Maurier book, and it was a dust jacket, and I'm just in really sad shape. Quite often, the papers on a piano roll have these creases built into them, and of course, they also are inclined to roll after uh, 90 years or so of being rolled. I did find, though, as I was preparing my packages, oh, I know, somebody ordered both the plain ones that I sell and the dyed ones, and I thought, I want to put them all, you know, pack them all, obviously, together and so on. Anyway, I had some success ironing the, the, um, the plain ones that had never been dyed. Uh, I didn't, obviously, do this. Uh, they also always have a piece of this brown tape that attaches the, the inner end of the roll to the spindly part, to the dowel. So I just folded that back on itself. Uh, this was going to wrap around, but it broke off before I could uh, get it secured. More of that, more of that, more of that. And then here was the piece that I cut off that um, paint chip. There's the little bear and the name of the color. Um, I really like the look of this. I don't believe that the cover is finished, but let's just say that by having <clears throat> signatures, a uh, signature sewn in, by having a few little things pre-made, these things are so much closer to completion or whatever than they were when they were lying about in uh, 
just in, in parts. So I'll just, I don't know if I can get this all on camera. This, this pink stuff is kind of a, an anomaly here, but anyway. Oh, there's some of the tool I didn't use. My innate uh, desire to, I just want to cover up that paper clip. My innate desire to group things by color. Those guys, that, I mean, I didn't do anything to that, so maybe it's not quite right to have it here, but. And then these few pink items. Oh, I'm kind of almost out of, I could probably go up a smidge at Morian. Anyway, that is my output for <laughs> <laughs> some of the time that's elapsed since that video. I hope that you found some benefit in uh, seeing these things after the fact. I hope that if you have some rub-ons, you try to use them and uh, don't let <laughs> time and um, possible abuse of them render them useless to you. Um, I've taken the approach that I will never buy them again. Uh, but the ones I have, I'm going to either use or throw. I mean, I'm going to try to use. If they don't work, out they go. And finito to that part. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you for joining me. I hope that I can make this kind of a regular recurring feature just because there is a certain satisfaction in getting all this stuff done and saying, look it. Um... I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.